This tutorial will focus on assigning some basic shaders in Maya with Arnold. A different tutorial will cover rendering, image textures, UV mapping and troubleshooting glass. This scene and HDRI image are provided in the description below. So first select the objects that you want to assign a material to. I'm going to select all the objects that I want to put a chrome material on, like the blades of the sword and the screws. Then I'll very carefully right click and hold on any one of those objects that I've just selected and go to assign new material. I'll then go to the Arnold shader section on the left, click on the word shader and on the right go to AI standard surface. As a beginner, you'll probably only ever really use the AI standard surface, car paint and ambient occlusion, but for now we'll use AI standard surface. You should see the material go white. You can now deselect the material if you like. You can see I've forgotten an object over here. So to assign a material to the ones that I've forgotten about, instead of putting a new material on, you can hold right click and go to assign existing material and you should see your standard surface material show up in this menu here. But it didn't have a name and it was quite difficult to work out what it was, especially if this was from a large list of materials all called AI standard surface. So if you click on a piece of geometry and go to your attribute editor on the right hand side with the vertical text here or by clicking on this icon up here and then go and find a tab that says AI standard surface with a number at the end of it. If you have lots of tabs over here, you might want to delete history by going to edit, delete all by type, history. This will make it a lot easier to get to the uh, standard surface and will often prevent problems from happening as well. Once you've found your AI standard surface tab, you can rename it by drag selecting the text and I'm gonna call this Chrome. You have to hit enter on the keyboard after typing in the name. If you don't hit enter, there's a weird glitch in Maya where it doesn't really understand what you're doing and then won't apply the material or something. So always make sure you hit enter after typing in the name to prevent problems from happening. Now in this Maya scene, this standard surface material is showing as white, but that doesn't really indicate really what it will look like in your final render yet. So if you go to the Arnold tab at the top and hit the render button, it should bring up your Arnold render view. Make sure that run IPR is ticked in the render menu here. But at the moment you can see it's pitch black because there's no lighting. Before we proceed, we need to add some lights so that we can see uh, what our material will look like. I'm gonna close this down. The most simple light that we'll need is a sky dome light. I find these the most effective to preview my materials in while I'm modeling. And we can add other ones later on when we come to render. So go to Arnold lights, and put in a sky dome light over the top of your scene. This creates a giant dome around your scene and on the attribute editor on the right in the AI sky dome light shape tab, you'll see where it says color. There's a checkerboard there, which is an invite for you to create a file input and then click on the folder here and then go to the HDRI material that you might have downloaded. I find a really good one to be this one here that I've downloaded from HDRI Haven and you can hit open on that. This is a 4K texture, which means in the reflections, it shouldn't look too pixelated. And if we go to Arnold render, you can see that the colors are quite neutral in this scene. They're not overly blue or overly yellow or anything like that. Now the Lambert one materials are not reflective at all. And the sword blade does have a slight sheen to it, but it isn't anywhere near as shiny as we need it to be. So what we can do is put a Chrome material on this. So if I just make my render window small just for the sake of this tutorial and then zoom out. If you click on the blade of your sword, go to your Chrome tab that you've just renamed. And then there's presets. If you click and hold on presets, you will see that there's a whole range of things you can choose from. The most common ones that I use are chrome, copper, glass, car paint, as well as rubber and plastic. And we can assign some of these in this tutorial. So let's go to chrome and you'll need to hit replace, which is just outside of my capture area here, but you'll have to go to chrome. There'll be an option called replace. Let go on the word replace. Now in your viewport, the material will go pure black for a moment until we change some settings up here. But in your render view, you'll see actually the blade of the sword does look quite shiny. So it's a bit pixelated, but we can fix that in a minute. So let's focus now on making our viewport look good. So we can close down our render view and we need to just simply turn on the light bulb up here. This environment is being reflected in our sword. You can also use shadows if you have a directional light of some sort. And I usually use screen space ambient occlusion as well, just to make things look good. Now let's apply some different materials. I'm gonna apply a less shiny metal material to these objects here. So mainly the guard of the sword there and the metal hilt down here. So I can do right click now, assign another new material, Arnold shader, standard surface, 
and rename it. I'm going to call this one rough metal and hit enter. I'll then go to preset. A good rough metal to use, which isn't too shiny or reflective, is called copper. Go to copper and then replace. You'll see replace on your screen. You can't see it on mine, but that's copper. Replace. You'll see it will go a shade of gold, but you can change that. If you go to your render, Arnold render, you can see the difference in the materials. The blade of the sword is shiny and reflecting the environment directly, whereas the copper material is quite diffuse in its reflections and the reflections are quite blurred. We can change the color of these materials. We don't have to stick with them, even though we chose it from a preset. So to do that, we can click on the geometry and go to the rough metal tab and then simply change the base color to any color we want. If you're at school, you might get a message saying uh, yes or no. Just hit no. It's just if you're on a Mac. And then you can go to change any color you want. I might just choose like a gray material like that. And that works quite well. Just so you know, you can increase or decrease how blurry or rough the reflections look by dragging the roughness slider over here to the left. But with zero roughness, you can see the reflections quite clear. And with a lot of roughness, they are very diffuse. But copper seems to have just a good balance, so it looks still quite metallic. Next, we're going to assign a material that isn't very shiny at all, like a, a rubber material or something that could be used for a fabric. So select any pieces of geometry that you feel should be fabric or a very non-shiny material, like this wrap around the base of the sword here. I've held shift to select multiple objects, and I'm going to hold right click, assign another new material, Arnold Shader, Standard Surface, and I'm going to call this one Rubber and I'm going to go to presets, rubber, replace. The rubber material comes out quite gray to start with and it will look a lot better if you click on it, go to the tab called rubber that you've just made and drag the color all the way down to almost black and that will look a lot better. Rubber is one of the really shiny materials you can choose from the presets and you can see the roughness here is still 0 0.6. It's not to max yet. So you can increase the roughness and if you increase the roughness beyond that, you sort of lose all the shine on there to the point where it starts to look like fabric uh, which isn't shiny at all. The next common material that you'll come across is glass. So if you click on this glass over here, right click again, new material, Arnold shader, standard surface, call this one glass and go to pre hit enter, go to preset glass replace. And by default, the glass looks good. To add color to the glass, it's not actually in the base color. You'll see it is grayed out. You have to go down to where it says transmission. So specular color will only affect the highlights of any lights in your scene, which is often very subtle. But when you go to transmission and you choose the color here, any change you make here will affect the color of the glass there. It seems to be very exaggerated. So even the slightest shade of blue makes the glass very vivid in color in your final render. Remember to check the final render as opposed to relying on your viewport information here. A good example of, of this is if you go to the opacity here, dragging the opacity down has a large effect in your final render, but very little effect in your scene in Maya. So bear that in mind. Sometimes you can have problems with glass in Maya where it becomes pure black or doesn't seem to let any light in. One way to fix it is to go to your glass tab and in the geometry area, tick thin world. That can affect some things with the glass. And you can also go to the tab, which for me is called cylinder shape 18. And in there, there's a, a drop down area called Arnold and ticking or unticking opaque can also have an effect on how light travels through your object. There'll be another tutorial that focuses on troubleshooting problems with glass. Finally, for plastic, if you, there's a common problem here. So if I sign a new material and go to Arnold Shader standard surface and rename this one to plastic and go to presets, plastic, replace. By default, the plastic material comes up as blue. And to change that, you might think you can just go to the color option up here and make it any color you want. So if I want this plastic to be black, for example, you can see that although it looks all right in your render view, there's going to be some situations, especially if there's light passing through this, where it will still look quite blue. So even though I have absolutely no evidence of blue here, it's just pure black. You can see I can even go to the red part of the spectrum over here, even though it's like in the red part of the spectrum or whatever, there's still blue being used in this. This is because if you scroll down, there's something called subsurface, subsurface scattering, and there's a subsurface color that is also plugged into this plastic. And if I were you, you can choose this, the exact same color for your subsurface as you use for your main color. So if you have a red plastic cup here, you can collapse these down and in subsurface here, you can click on the subsurface color, use the pipette and color pick 
the red color from there. If you're on a Mac at school, the pipette color picker has been disabled for some weird reason. You might just have to remember these values or just pick a color that looks roughly the same. Finally, it is possible to select individual faces to assign materials to as well as an entire object. So you can go to face mode, drag select your object. And if I grow my selection by holding shift and hitting the full stop button on my keyboard, I can select that more accurately and then go to right click, assign existing material. I'll choose my rubber material, which is just off screen. Sorry, but it's my rubber material. Also, if you want to organize your materials, you can go up here to what's called the hyper shader and this lists all of your materials. For some weird reason, it doesn't give you the previews for Arnold materials in here, but like it does for Lambert and Fong materials, but it does give you this over here. So it gives you a nice um, idea of what your material will look like when you apply it. And you can change all of the settings of the materials here and see more information. If you were to do right click graph network, it shows you how this material is made up if you want to be more advanced. That's it for assigning shaders. The next tutorial will focus on assigning image based textures, UV mapping and then rendering.